everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Laura Afonso. We are live here at the Navigate Credit U Broadcast <coughs> Center for Go Local Prov. And today, on this lovely Halloween afternoon, we are getting a little bit boozy. <laughs> and we're talking about some craft cocktails right here in Providence. We've got some special guests today, and they're going to be mixing up some beverages. And I'm only going to try to take one sip from each. <laughs> Just one. Don't let me get too crazy. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> so for our very first guest, we have Michael from Base. Thank you so much for joining me today, Michael. Thank you for having it's me. Much appreciated. So let's get started off. I just want to hear a little bit about yourself and how you got started up with everything. All right. So um, I'm 28 years old from Pawtucket. Um, moved to New York a few years ago, I want to say. Um, took a job in education, but took a part-time job bar backing in this really cool cocktail bar in East Village called Wiseman. Oh, and cool. I just fell in love with the culture ever since. Yeah, bar backing is a great way to start off if you're interested in the bar scene and mm -hmm. the industry life. Bar backing kind of gives you the ins and outs of what a bartender really needs to do from mm -hmm. stocking ice to, you know, grabbing mint for the service bar and everything in between. You're the bartender's right hand man. So I'm sure you know all about yeah. that now. And you're just like watching everything going on. So I really fell in love with the culture here. Yeah. Um, then I moved back to Providence worked a few odd jobs, and then landed a job with um, the Doran's Kitchen and Cocktails. And that's where I really became like a student of craft cocktails. So I'd like to take a second and thank them for everything. My time there was awesome. Yeah, so I really like that, a student of craft mm -hmm. cocktails, because it is really something you invest your time into that you really have to learn about building a cocktail, learning about sugar content and how sugar sinks when you pour, Dude. all that kind of <laughs> stuff. It, there's way more that goes into it than just, you know, pushing the soda gun. No. Yeah. So you're also, so you start with the Dorrance. Can you tell so me I, a little bit about your experience there? Um, yeah, I mean, first things first, it's, I, th I think it's one of the premier places to get a cocktail. Absolutely. And it's a long, it's a long, huge bar. I think the seats had like 20 to 23 seats. And then just from there, I had the opportunity to work under some of the I like to call them like the founding fathers of the cocktails in the yeah. city of Providence. So the guys who've been doing this for like 20, 25 years. So I was able to really study underneath them and also got some experience with like working in a fine dining restaurant and that kind of uh, bringing that type of attention to detail into my craft. Definitely. That absolutely helps in every aspect. Every aspect. Yeah, fine dining is a whole other animal in the service industry, so it really lets you hone in on everything that you're doing, how you're making it. Mm -hmm. You can't just be sloppy and spilling things. You have to be really into what you're doing. Yeah. Yes. Now, so you're also over at... The Cook and Brown. Brown. Yes, I'm at the oh. Cook and Brown on the east side. Um, and that's a, a total different uh, change of pace just because it's not as formal as the dorms, if you would. Mm -hmm. And it's very more relaxed. And I think there gives me an opportunity to work on uh, <laughs> being the personable side of being a bartender. And also, yeah. it's, because the pace has changed over there, it also that place has allowed me to really work on my craft. And um, Nemo, the head chef there and the owner, does a good job of like just letting me use the space when I need to use the space. For example, nice. we've done a few how-to videos that we've got a really good response from. And we use that bar because that backdrop is really beautiful. It and is. the entire restaurant is beautiful. It's a great mm -hmm. space, yeah. And they have a really nice cocktail list. Yes, they do. The <laughs> Our bar manager over there, Megan, she's incredibly she talented. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So every day, I, it's good for me because like I'm, again, like I have no problem I'm, I consider myself like a blank canvas, and I just really want to learn, and I'm trying to learn as much as I can as mm. I progress in my career with this. Right. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> now, when you're not on the service side of the bar, when you get to sit on a bar stool, what's your drink of choice? What do you like to order? I'm very impulsive. Um, oh, so okay. if <laughs> it changes from yeah, you know, it changes. Based so on like, if the person is. I remember I worked a a a wedding one time, and, the, and it was an older wedding, so the it was an older group of women. They just kept um, drinking, like, uh, white wine sprinters. I made, like, yeah. 60 of them. You're like, great. And I was drinking 60 of them for the whole summer. But um, yeah. I really do like to use, um, I think gin is, is the start of the base for it. Every great cocktail. Yeah. And, but like I said, I'm impulsive. So whatever people are ordering a lot of, then I'm just like, oh, I guess now it's time to have one of these because that's what's on the agenda today. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm actually a fan of gin myself. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people say that it tastes like pine needles or it tastes like soap. <laughs> but I think it tastes delicious. Yeah, I think, I think it tastes delicious too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I like. I'm a personal a dirty gin or a or a vodka soda or a margarita kind of. Those are the three, <laughs> those are really the only three drinks that I will go between. Like you said, depending on the mood. Depending, yeah. It's to me like drinking all depending on the mood. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's usually a ha it's either how happy am I type of mood. Really, okay, is. Yeah. yeah. It's always a good mood. <laughs> and speaking of the mood, the mood right now is seasonal. It's Halloween, yes. where everyone's pumpkin spice, this, and apple cider. So. What do you think, what are some of your favorite <laughs> ingredients to work with for seasonal cocktails? I mean, you've got a lot of experience working on the bars, you see these yeah. cocktail lists. Like, what kind of ingredients are fun, that are original, that you see? I think right now, um, definitely with seasonal, um, f for example, like, I won't drink whiskey during the summer. I just don't think it's something that you would yeah. drink during the summer. But once it's, it's fall and once it gets a little bit chilly, that's something that you could use. Or, right like, up. spiced rum is something that we like to use, too. But I've really been fascinated with, again, working under Megan and like just picking up on cues of what she does at the Cook and Brown. I've been really a big fan of Allspice, which is a uh, West Indies mm -hmm. liqueur, and it uses it's just an Allspice liqueur, and it uses that okay. that spice right there too. Um, and you find them a lot in like tiki drinks, so um, I'm actually I actually have some of that with me today. So. So we're gonna get a peek. We're gonna get a sneak peek. Yeah. Awesome. Well, speaking of that. We hear about, we've heard about your bar history, yeah. how you learned how to make all of these really cool drinks, and you actually started a business, which is yes. Base. Yes, uh, we you started Base. Yes, yeah. I have a partner, my friend Christy, the beautiful Christy, who's here. Yes. Um, moral support, I've known her for a long time. She's a bartender as well, or wants to get into it, and it started with me as like, well, uh, well, I need another bartender, and I also have no problem teaching her everything that I've learned too. So if she wants to be a bartender, then let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, that's great. I think you have to, as a bartender, you can pass on what you have learned from bartenders past bartenders onto past, bartenders yeah. of future. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, what I love about BASE is, I like your, your slogan, I guess I could call it. And yeah. It's keep it a secret. So or, yeah. It, it so really is. I like, probably like it's this it mysterious thing. Shed some light on how we got started. Yeah. With that. So yeah. I, I'm really curious because I I hear things about it. I see like little snippets, but yeah. you're careful not to share too much. No, we're not. We're, yeah, we very are careful. Um, so how it got started is like one of the things how I wanted to practice on my craft was basically just uh, buying a bunch of alcohol making a bunch of syrups and making some recipes or working on some other recipes that I was familiar with and practicing on my friends. Yeah, and I'm sure um, they didn't mind. Yeah, my, my parents' basement had like a perfect space for it. So it started with me just inviting a few friends. Um, excuse me. And then, you know, like the first time I invited people, I think only six people showed up. And then, but as they progressed and as I progressed as a bartender, like my attention to detail went up and, you know, just uh, becoming, a, like I said, becoming a student of that game and like, just really just like showing my friends or my friends and family how much I've progressed or how much I'm learning. And then it just like picked up and picked up. And next thing you know, we had a menu. And next thing you know, we had yeah. every single cocktail had a different cup. And it got too big to have in my, my parents' basement. Yeah. So we decided to, I teamed up with um, some very good friends of mine, Siobhan and Rachel, who were hosting private Pop, private dinners, if you would, sort yeah. of to like what we were doing. Okay. And they were working out of a studio space in Providence, and they invited us to work a cocktail party there, and they would provide the food. And that was kind of like our coming out party. Yeah. And it was a big thing for me because it had been something that I was so comfortable doing in my parents' basement, but now it was the first time that we're going. I'm going to share this project with the world. With the public. With the public, yeah. Right. And that was a huge, because I, I had never put myself out there like that before. Um, and we just like hit the ground running. We've gotten a lot of positive momentum, I should say. And yeah. we're looking forward to that. Lots of good feedback. Yeah. I think it's really cool to bring something original to Providence and to have this event that if you're looking to be, you know, socially yeah. drinking, going out for a nice cocktail, you know, you're not just looking to go out and have, you know, a whole bunch of just mixed drinks. Yeah. You're looking to have something that tastes good, that had a lot of thought behind it. Definitely. Um, to really pick up on those flavors. Um, this is kind of like the perfect opportunity, and it's really fun. Yeah, I know. Yes. Well, what we really wanted to do too was like, um, you know, like we kind of like woke up one. I woke up one day and just like found a void. And what I really wanted to do was create a space where people can feel comfortable. And also, like, we're in that weird. We're, I mean, we're the same age that like later millennials, almost thirties, where we still want to be social because we're still going out drinking Absolutely. every weekend. Yeah. But we want to try something new. So. But we also wanted, I also wanted to, like I said, I was practicing on my friends, getting them familiar with the cocktail culture. Right. So what our mission is to really un educate the underrepresented demographic in the cocktail culture and make them familiar <laughs> with what goes in a whiskey sour, how to, you know, like how to properly order a cocktail when you go to a bar like that's that a too. Really good point. So that's what we really are aiming to do. All the while we've been throwing secret cocktail parties and incongruent spaces, which is part of our niche too. Okay. Like, 
So we're doing pop-up bars in places where you wouldn't think there would be a pop-up bar. Is it too much of a secret to tell us some examples of where you are? Um, our, last, our last party, which was, I think, went our best party. Like, our first one, we worked out of a studio, wide open studio. We did another studio. Um, and then our last party, we worked out of the Elmwood Diner. Yeah. On Elmwood Street, yeah, which is great because that diner is, com it's like one of the first diners in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not being used right now, but everything in there works. So we didn't, so when we invited our guests to it, you know, they didn't get the address until like a day before. That's a part of it. Yeah. I mean, some of them got the address they didn't even know. We didn't let people know that it was the Elmwood Diner. Right. They just they followed, just, they put know, the address in GPS, in GPS and, like, and oh then they gosh. showed up and they're like, oh my God, we're at the diner. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Because some of the, our patrons that night, had grown grown up going, going to the Elmwood Diner. Oh my gosh. So that's for us to kind of like n tap into that nostalgia and again provide an experience for people that they just probably are not going to get anywhere else. And like yeah. it's such a user oriented experience where like again you don't know where things are going where it's going to be and then once you get there you don't know who's going to be there. Mm. So we're kind of like we're really calling on people to be be social and put themselves out there. Yeah. Yeah. Now is there a list or some sort of guest <laughs> list that uh, you need to get Yeah, on? we just opened up our RSVP because we do want to open our list to a lot more people. Mm. But um, our team right now was really, really small. It's myself and Christy and then uh, whoever, the, whoever our chef is tonight and whoever they bring in. So for us to sustain <laughs> such a large party is yeah. kind of hard because we do want to focus <laughs> on that detail and giving everyone a pleasurable experience. Right. We're not necessarily worried about numbers right now. We're just worried about like really perfecting our craft and yeah. getting the quality, right job done. Quantity. Yeah, quality. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, how many people on average do you usually have? I want to say on average 45 people. Wow. Our first party was 45. Our mm -hmm. second party was 70 people. Oh, my God. And although everyone loved it, I was upset because we okay, couldn't so get the drinks out fast okay, enough. Okay, okay. Like, I, I hated waiting at a line. I, I hated yeah. seeing people wait in line. But everyone loved you know, it, and I was great about it. Hands, but we only have two. We just couldn't get the people, drinks out so. fast enough. And then our second party, I mean, our third party, excuse me, we saw 46 people. Okay. And that went perfect because okay. we had drinks were being made, and we had people passing out drinks. So it went, nobody had to wait. Food right. got passed around, and it was perfect. Yeah. Nice. Now, what kind of food do you, will you sometimes or occasionally have our last our last party we were in a diner so we kind of wanted to tap into that like american classic food so yeah. we just had um but with a little twist to it how we wanted to do things so right. we had uh sliders tomato soup apple pie Fun. grilled cheese a little quick bites to keep people uh what sober think of that <laughs> diner. yeah, yeah exactly. what would you think of, of the diner as well too exactly Okay, so we've listened to you talk about all of your <laughs> amazing craft that you've built and learned. So can you tell me what you're going to make me today? And if you could walk me through. Yeah, we're going to walk you through it right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm going to take notes. So we're going to be making a tiki style flip. Ooh. Um, and I say tiki because we are using some rum and we're using that allspice. Okay. But um, this drink comes from, we wanted to, our, our most popular cocktail within our patrons is um, a rum drink on there like called Almond Love You Better. It's a play on love words it. as I'm going to love you better. Um, and it's just almond milk, coconut rum, and pineapple juice. I wanted to create something like a pina colada, but I don't like cream and I didn't want to yeah. do any dairy. I think so, that cream yeah. and, and with milk mixed alcohol can sometimes be a little, a little bit too much. Yeah, so we didn't do that. It is a huge risk. Yeah. Um, and then we added a little egg white to just froth it up. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to do a seasonal cocktail. Okay. So we're gonna get started on that yeah. now, yeah. Yeah, so I love egg white in a cocktail because if you haven't seen it before, I mean, when you shake an egg white mm -hmm. in a cocktail, it gets so nice and frothy, it gives it that nice little head on the glass, it really comes out beautiful. It makes such a nice, so smooth and soft texture. Yes, yes it does. Drink. Yeah, definitely. So we're gonna get started, so um, we're gonna do um, a little bit of coconut rum, do yeah. some, Coconut spiced rum. rum. Awesome. So, a couple different kinds of rum. De yeah, a couple different kinds of rum. Yeah. So, two parts. Well, yeah, I'm just making, I'm making enough for oh, two cocktails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one, and for, then one for me. One for you, one for <laughs> me, yeah. Coconut rum, this is the, yep, the coconut rum, and there's a cinnamon. Some cinnamon. So, now, do you make some of your syrups yourself? We make all the syrups ourselves, all yeah. Yourself. I make everything myself so with the help. So, you use it on your own? Yeah, um, awesome. and then this is the spiced rum. We used some of that already. And then we're just going to go, 
We're gonna add a whole egg in egg. here. A whole egg. Okay, a whole so egg. Not yeah. Just the whites. Not the egg. No, when you use a whole egg, it kind of creates like an eggnog, ah. and that's something that we wanted. Again, we used egg whites, but yes. you know, a flip is typically like a drink that you would have like after dinner or something okay. like that. Yeah. So um, we're hoping that with something like this, you end your night with this cocktail. Yeah. yeah it's nice. Classic bartender, over the shoulder Yeah, shade. everybody has their own technique. Yep. I've you noticed know, that. Everyone has their own clutch. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get this thing started. Yeah, let's see it. And then we're just going to double strain it so we don't get Ooh, any. The double strain. Wow. Look at that. It looks delicious. Wow. You're right, the, um, having the yolk in there. Having the yolk kind of changes it a little bit. Yeah. We're just going to add a little bit of Angostura bitters, which is mm. every cocktail bartender's best friend. And then to mm. get some aroma in there, we're just going to create a little bit of cinnamon on top. Yeah. I wish I could go in like full detail and make this thing pretty, but this is as best as we could do. I think this looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, I'll have a sip with you. All right, we'll do a little cheers. Cheers. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> this really does taste like fall in a little cute cup. And I have to say, I really appreciate your glassware. It's beautiful. <laughs> and your coasters. I don't know, obviously, they can't see, but you have your... Yeah, that's name. our logo right there. It's just B-A-S. Um, we got the... We're, the word base obviously is the root word of the word basement, where we got this mm. whole thing started. Um, okay, because that was It's kind of like, this. yeah, it's weird. Like, it just came to me like overnight. Not, I shouldn't say overnight. I was just like thinking there, but it, it was really like, what, you know, what we're trying, what we eventually, what we've been doing is creating a space where people can come and be comfortable and learn about something and try some different things. So. Yeah. Comfortable as though you were in your parents' basement hanging Enough. Out with your friends. Yeah, but so. not that – because we still try to create that, like, that like cocktail vibe, yeah. that cocktail bar vibe, um, but it just happened. I don't know. It, like, it worked. It wasn't, like, something yeah, – I didn't yeah. have – it was this one time, one shot. We hit it, and it, we've been stuck with it. And, like, it works because it's also so cryptic. Yeah. We spelled the word phonetically, so yep. that's why it looks like that. And people just don't know what it is. And we it don't really, it adds more to the mystique. It. And we're yeah. not less, I mean, we eventually want to open our doors to everyone. And we yeah. want to be able to service everyone. But right now, our niche is becoming a moving target and Absolutely. providing something that people I think have it makes to it be there. makes it all the more fun. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to take one more sip. Of this <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm definitely going to take one more sip because it's so good. Mm -hmm. It's just so good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for Absolutely. having us. Absolutely. We can't wait to try more of your cocktails coming up in the future. So can we follow you on Instagram? Yes, we are. And maybe be in the know yeah. with what's going on with Base. Yes, um, we are on Instagram as Base PVD, just B-A-S-P-V-D. Um, our next pop-up is um, a little bit of a different concept, but we were contacted by Ten Rocks Tapas Bar in Pawtucket. Cool. And uh, they are giving me complete creative control of the evening the Ooh. night before Thanksgiving. So oh we're putting cocktails God. on that the menu. Like the and we're going to have, I you know, reached out to my friend Siobhan. And she's helping me consult on the tapas menu. Yeah. So it's good for us because we get to open our doors to everyone. And also try our hand at, uh, I guess, restaurant managing, if you would, and creating yeah. a space. Um, but we hope to see a lot of people there, just because I know b in the past we haven't been able to service as much people as we wanted to. Yep. But with an opportunity like this, our doors are open for everyone, and I get to tap into my Cape Verdean roots. So I go. can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> too, Defin yeah. Oh, my God, That's definitely. beautiful. Awesome. Well, make sure you follow them on Instagram at BasePVD so you can check out where they're going to be popping up in the future so you can get on that guest list. That <laughs> mystery, the mysterious coveted guest list. All right. Well, don't go anywhere because we have some more cocktails coming right up.
Thank you for tuning back in, everyone. We are here with some more cocktails for you. Um, we are here with Leishla from Cortland Club. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So you are kind of like a celebrity in the <laughs> bartender realm of Providence. You're kind of, you've developed this like legend for yourself. You're flattering. <laughs> uh, I, well, it's, but it's only true. It's only true. So I think I came across you when you were working at the Eddie, yep. and I really fell in love with your cocktails. And it was just such you make such a great presence, having a nice time when you're sitting at your bar. So I think that that kudos to you. Thank you. I mean, I think it's super important when somebody comes in if they're yeah coming to to my bar. It's important for me to host them as if I, they were coming to my house or. Always, you know, just making sure that they feel comfortable wherever they are. So Definitely. That's, that's part of my job. You're a host. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to hear a little bit about your backstory, how you got started up with bartending, how you, what kind of drinks you like to pour, and how you got to where you are today at the Cortland Club. Yeah. So um, I started off, you know, years ago at uh, Subway, actually. Ah, <laughs> building sandwiches first. Yeah. Um, yes. And I fell in love with the idea of, like, being able to meet people that remember, and they remembered me, and even though, though I was just making sandwiches, it mm -hmm. was, like, really nice to have people accept me as some to part of their life. that way, yeah. Yeah, so um, I did that for a while and moved on to Chili's. Um, okay. Yeah, so I was there serving. I had a couple bar shifts, but it didn't last too long. Mm. But um, that was one of my, you know, entry points into the hospitality industry, yeah. really understanding how to serve. Yep. A lot um, of people start as servers. They go up to maybe a bar back or go into, you know, bartending, whichever one. And that's a really great starting point. And at a corporate place like Chili's, it gives you a lot of experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So um, then I moved on to a place called Zuma's Tex Mex, which is in Faneuil Hall in Boston. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you were up in Boston. Yeah. Nice. So I'm originally from Boston, uh, born and raised. I've been here for about three years. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, so. I didn't know that you were born in Boston, whether you were from Boston. Yeah. Yeah, yeah awesome. So. Well, we're glad to have you in Providence. <laughs> I'm, we, glad, I'm glad that we snagged you from yeah. Boston. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you know, being at Zuma's, it was it was tough because I did have all odds against me. I was the only female on staff. Really? Time, or actually female bartender on staff. Okay. Um, and I had to kind of fight my way through that. And Definitely. And it, it was amazing, uh, amazing learning experience because I was able to navigate through a bunch of personalities that I would never have been able to do that before. Yeah, <laughs> so no, great. absolutely. That's something you find is behind the bar is having to meet all walks of life, all different kind of people. Yeah. And, you know dealing with their personalities and mixing it with your own. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, that was the best part about, about that job. Um, then, you know, went to a couple places that were more focused on the craft cocktail. Yeah. Um, I went to a place called The Gallows, which is in the South End. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. It's um, awesome. I was there for about two years where I, I was really given the opportunity to learn under some great people and become inspired and empowered by women that were behind that bar because we were absolutely mostly a female staff at that time. Oh, that's the best. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I spent every single day learning the cocktails that were on that menu. I've spent time tasting through the spirits and trying to get my spot. And they gave me the opportunity to do that. And that was like the, the highlight of my career. That's amazing. <laughs> that yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. So uh, ever since then, it's just been uphill from there. So, yeah. Great. Um, yeah. So, so then that brought you to Providence. You started working at the Eddy. And yeah. you had a great run there. Yeah. So uh, I moved to Providence. And um, I was fortunate to be able to get a job at the Eddy. You know, that's a kind yeah. of hard thing to do. They're like a super small staff. Um, they have extremely high standards with who they're hiring. They make sure that, you know, you mesh well with the staff. Yeah. You have an attentive attention to detail that's, you know, um, in line with all of theirs as well. So, um, yeah, I, I spent the last two years there. I learned under Jen Davis, who is the best person to ever she's learn great. under in the city. Yeah. Um, honestly, and in, in this side of the, the country, I feel like, you know, she's, an amazing mentor, and I'm really fortunate to have been able to get uh, a spot there to learn under her. So yeah, that must you must really appreciate that to be able to take on what she's given to you to learn and be able to make your own. So absolutely, yeah. I still call her whenever I need anything. Oh, so. that's so nice. <laughs> We're really it's nice to friends. have that kind of mentor, mentor mentee relationship. Yeah, for yeah, sure. awesome. So. so from there, that led you to the Cortland Club. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about the Cortland Club, because I think it's a really cool concept that Providence gets to enjoy, so. Yeah, um, so the Cortland Club is a cocktail bar on the east, on the west side. Um, and they've been open for just exactly a year, actually. Um, they ha are a great, like, inclusive space. It's very small. Uh, there's about, what, 45 seats? So it's okay, pretty yeah. small, just like the, just like the Eddie was. But um, they also are very focused on, like, attention to detail, making sure that you are having the best time 
um, hospitality focused. Mm -hmm. um, the space itself is absolutely beautiful. Jason, uh, who designed the space and is also the owner, he just paid attention to every single detail and making it sure that you feel comfortable there yeah. um, and want to hang out. So, so yeah, I walked into that bar when they first opened, and it was like one of my favorite spaces to be. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So again, another another lucky thing to happen where I was able to take over their beverage uh, directing position, which is huge. Congratulations! Yeah, and that's and that's fairly new. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's a really big deal. So we're all very excited for you. Thank you. I can't wait to come visit you there. I know. I'm I'm pretty excited. We've had a lot of cool, fun things in the works. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, we've got a couple events, you know, this one event tomorrow actually is with El Rancho Grande. Oh my God, yeah. that's great. Yeah, they're taking over our kitchen for the weekend, so it's going to be really? a fun time. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, we just had them on last week and yeah. we absolutely adore their food. They're just I great. So that's going to be a hit. Yeah. I'm that's really excited awesome. about it. We've got some great cocktails to pair, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so I've been there for the last month and a half and I'm really excited to, you know, show everybody what I've got going on and finally give somebody a, everybody a little piece of me and what I what I can give out to, to them so that's awesome yeah yeah now Cortland Club Club is in the name so it kind of has that feel of being a part of something yeah is did it start off that it was um, that it was a, like a club that you could join or is it something that is open to the public so it's 100% open to the public uh, that's there awesome. is a members program though so oh, cool. if you find the program you get a bunch of little perks so you can make reservations if you want to come in with your friends nice. on a really busy night you're more than welcome to, to call us up and tell us like hey I've got four people let's come and sit and we want to enjoy the space um, you can come to private tastings that we host for members uh, okay. monthly. We do that a couple times a month. Um, and you have first access passes to, like, private dinners. Nice. Um, there's a, lot, a, a bunch of small little perks that come yeah. with it, but those are just, like, the main three so far. A little bit of everything. So yeah. Right. Um, there is also the locker membership where you can purchase Ooh. a locker there. Okay. Um, I help you curate a spirits list, and we put a spirit or wine in your locker of your choosing, and you can come and host your friends or just come in and have a drink. And, and so that's kind of, like, your spirit that's yeah. there for you. Yeah. So nobody else drinks from it. It's, it's just all yours. It's, all yours. Yeah. it's got your name on it. And you get to talk to me, and uh, we can we can find. What's out what better you like, than so. that? <laughs> yeah, you can really hone in on like what kind of flavors you're looking for. That's really cool. Yeah, awesome. So, what are you going to be making me today? Great. So, uh, I'm actually going uh, on the non-alcoholic route. I cool. We got a little mocktail action. Yeah. 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 So I uh, I recently stopped drinking the last uh, maybe three four months or so. Okay. I've, I've, I think that it's important that. You know, taking care of our bodies is, in this industry, it's a little tough to do that. Um, so Being I found behind the bar, it's, you know, you're constantly yeah. there at our arm's reach. So, yeah, yeah definitely. And, you know, friends, it's, an indus it's industry culture to have, you know, a drink with friends sometimes during the shift. Definitely. The shift. And, uh, I mean, with, within moderation, obviously. But, yeah. Um, it's just... For, for me, I, I realized that I was it was taking a toll on my health. So I, I think that it's important to kind of hone that down and let people feel comfortable with, yeah. with uh, going the non-alcoholic route. There's a lot of it. respect for that. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. If you can recognize what you're looking for, and especially with the industry being behind the bar and always being able to take a shot with a friend and, you know, if you do that every day or, or every shift, like you said, it could take a toll. So much respect to you for being able to recognize that. Thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is uh, we're using the Seed Lip. Uh, it's an English non-alcoholic distillate, so it's got a, a ton of herbs in it. So nice. Like thyme, uh, oregano, it's kind of bitter, it's very aromatic. Uh, with that, I paired it with a little bit of shiso and celery. Okay, so and what is shiso? So shiso is a, think of like a mint, but it's actually very bitter, herbaceous, and kind Ooh. of earthy. Okay, so um, this is a very flavorful drink that we're going to be having. Yes. Lots of different herbal scents, yes. flavors to it. That sounds really lovely. Yeah, so a little bit of the, the seed lip, some shiso, celery, and then this uh, Asian tonic, which is Ooh. a... Just like your typical tonic, except it has a, a lot of herbs added to it, as well as cucumber. So it's going to bring Lovely. a little brightness to that. Yeah. So um, I will. Yeah. Right now. I think that being able to have a mocktail at the bar sometimes, you know, you're having dinner and you just want to have a little something to go along with it, but you might not need to have a whole drink. Having a mocktail is always a nice course of action. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think. I mean, even just last night, I I went out with my boyfriend and we were able to just have a non-alcoholic cocktail and it was great. I had yeah. a wonderful time and I woke up feeling okay. So Beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Sans the headache. Yeah. So <laughs> Awesome. All right. So we're going to put a little bit of celery in this as well just to give it a little more aromatic. Yeah. Uh, more ice. It's important to keep that 
chilled since it is kind of bitter. Mm. Uh, and then also just kind of rub a little bit of shiso on there. Ooh, okay. So you're kind of rubbing it around the rim. So yes. you get that flavor when you go to sip. That's a, a neat bartender trick that I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, uh, like you. taking a twist and rimming the martini glass. So you're picking up on the aromas, the smell, the, the taste of it when you actually, the glass hits your lips. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, you want to make sure that you're expressing all those oils onto the glass. So that way, not only are you enjoying it, but the people around you are enjoying it. Yeah. So, they can yeah. pick up on it and say, that smells really good. I think I'll have two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what, tell me about this that you're going to spray. Um, so a little this spritz. is absinthe. So it's going to bring out mm. a lot of that bitter flavor as okay. well. Uh, but still kind of mellow out, you know, the, the aromatic or not mellow out. it's going to give it a little more aromatic it's a little brighter nice. rather than continuing it with like the bitter herbaceousness okay so, yeah and now when you spray that on it kind of it also just enhances those flavors exactly beautiful okay let's cheers, cheers. awesome wow yeah. That is lovely, yeah. you're, and you're so right with those different, all the herbs that come together. You can't necessarily pinpoint one. I can definitely pick up on the cucumber, yep. but it really is a lovely, like very smooth drink that I would absolutely love to pair with a nice meal. Yeah, and which is, and that's even, you know, that's great to hear that you can pick up that cucumber, so it's so minimal in that cocktail. So like, I feel like the absence really just brought that out. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. I've seen that before, being able to do a little spritz, and I think it's really cool. That way it kind of just, it, it, a little subtle hint at the end. Yeah. Yeah, that's sure. awesome. Now, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> now, how often are, do you find yourself at Cortland Club? Um, right now, since I'm just uh, starting there, uh, the last month I've been there almost every single day. Mm -hmm. um, every single day. Yeah. Like, no days off. <laughs> no days Always off. working. I want to make sure that, you know, the, the employees are set up for success and mm -hmm. really understand what my vision is for the bar moving forward. That's awesome. Um, I have a whole different, you know, plan for this bar. I, I want really want to focus a lot more on the hospitality and also just focusing on understanding the the person once they walk in and giving them the experience that they're looking for. Yeah. Um, whether it be having a couple cocktails, whether it be have, having something non-alcoholic, I want us to understand what those options are and yeah. be able to voice them uh, properly to them so that way they can make a, a good decision. On right. What they want, so. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's nice that the West End has a neighborhood bar like that, that people who live in the community can come in, sit down, have a connection with you or whoever is on the bar staff and really be able to feel like they're they're at home in their neighborhood, they're at home in their community. They're being taken care of. Yeah. Yes, that's the whole idea, so. That's the best part. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Now, it is Halloween. Do you have any plans for tonight? <laughs> yeah. Uh, my daughter is uh, making us dress up as detectives. Oh. She's uh, Nancy Drew. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's kind of a bookworm, so she. Um, and Nancy like Drew is a fan favorite? Her favorite mm, one. Oh, my uh, gosh. Uh, yeah, so she dressed up as Nancy Drew, so we're dressing up as Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you guys are going to make the best detectives yeah. I've seen thus far. Solving I hope crimes. to see pictures of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Who stole all my candy? It could have been mom. <laughs> That's could it? always mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I hope that you guys have a fun night of trick-or-treating. Thank you. Yes, and thank you so much for joining us and bringing us this beautiful mocktail. I really love it. I'm going to have some more sips of it before yeah. you go. Yes. Uh, same. But don't go anywhere because we have our final guests mixing up some more cocktails. So we'll be right back.
Thanks for tuning back in. We are still live here from the Navigant Cardio Broadcast Center, here with our third and final guest for our boozy cocktail special. Phil, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having we me. We have Phil from Seed and Sip, which is a new concept, relatively new, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, about a year, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. You're coming up on a year. Can you tell me a little bit about Seed and Sip mm -hmm. and what it entails and your background, how you got started up with yeah, it? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So Seed and Sip is basically a mobile bartending service. Mm -hmm. um, we do weddings, corporate functions, birthday parties, retirement parties, anything that's going to really require some celebration, uh, celebration and cocktails yeah. and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to really keep things local in some type of aspect of the events, um, whether it be using local breweries or distilleries, wineries from the area, or we also team up with a lot of farms from the area. Uh, we'll do signature cocktails based off of kind of things that we talk with our clients about. Nice. Uh, you know, and we'll pick the produce and use the garnishes uh, from the farms uh, for the syrups uh, that are going to go into the actual cocktails too. That's beautiful. I love that you're able to pull, pick and pull from local farms right. and really emphasize local Rhode Island feels. Right. Awesome. It's farm to glass. A lot of people are doing farm to table. We kind of push the envelope. Glass. Yep, farm to glass. So okay. keep it local. Your little spin on it. You know it. Yeah. <laughs> so where were you before you started Seed and Sip <sighs> over a year ago? Where was I? So I've been in the business. It's myself and uh, I have a business partner named Jeff. Um, between the two of us, we've got about 25 to 30 years of wow. industry experience. Okay. Uh, so I know what you're doing. Yeah. So I started when I was about 16, busing to bar back, to server, to bartender, to manager, general manager. Um, he was kind of the same way. Uh, he's more on the beverage side of it, um, but we've been in and around the Providence area uh, between the two of us. He's a little more in the Cape in uh, Boston uh, recently, but since then we basically said, hey, there's something missing in this area that most people aren't doing after especially a couple of cocktails we had. And, yeah. You know, we kind of joked about it at first, and then after a couple of days, we were like, this could actually work if could we really... really brilliant idea. Right, so yeah. it seems to be doing all right so far. So, awesome. Yeah, that's well, how it started. Yeah. I think it is a great idea because I think a lot of people, you know, you think about a wedding, a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, you go to a venue, they probably provide the bar. I think a lot of people are starting to move in a different direction with weddings and events like that, where mm -hmm. you'll have maybe something small, more intimate, right. a backyard wedding, where you'll need your own bar services. Right. Or let's say you're having a family reunion or mm -hmm. something like that that you may not be in that traditional setting where there is a bar that's provided and you don't necessarily want to you know start to mix up your own cocktails mm -hmm. and you don't know what you're doing so it is really great to be able to have that professional crafted touch from a local bar service mm -hmm. at your own party and what's more fun than that you get to welcome them into your home and right. have a celebration <laughs> uh cheers over a couple of drinks oh, yeah. so i think that that's really special so what have what kind of events were you doing over the past over the summer and recently well this summer was our first full year by mm. the time we actually got licensed uh back in i think it was february of last year uh, a lot of people were already booked for weddings you know when you're doing weddings and things like that you book a lot of people are booking far in advance that's so true. we kind of missed the mark we only did about 10 events last year this year we've gone way above that and done about wow. 40. Oh my gosh. Um, so this summer's been pretty busy. I mean, every Friday and Saturday, we were pretty much booked for the summer. Um, and it's unique because every event, even though we're bartending, every event is different. Okay. So most of the time, you're not even, I'm not even meeting the person who's throwing this party until we actually get there. Um, and then a lot of times you're not seeing the space until you get there either. So you don't know what you're working. There's with. a lot of challenges. Might so be a big space, might right. be a little teeny tiny exactly. closet. So I mean, we I should back it up a little bit. We can actually do everything from just showing up and bartending, or we could provide the whole service, which is we have rustic mobile bars that we bring in. We That's have so some cool. ladder back bars. We can bring all the alcohol. We have the licenses to do that. Um, we have you know, all the ice, the cups, the things that like you probably mm -hmm. wouldn't think, but you do need. Yeah. Um, so, you know, stairs are a big factor. When I mean, you don't think, when you're mm -hmm. carrying hundreds of pounds of things, one stair can lots be. Lots of bottles, lots of glassware, right. ice, all that exactly. stuff can be really Exactly. Yeah, heavy. so one event where, you know, I can park right down the road and unload, takes me an hour, and then I show up the next day to another event, and they make you park, you know, half a mile down the road, and you're like, okay, this is going to take me a lot longer. Yeah. So you scramble sometimes, but mm -hmm. we learn as we go, so that's what's fun about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can do anything from, like, let's say I want to have you come bartend my party. You could do, like, a cash bar, mm -hmm. or it could be, like, an open bar style where you bring all the booze, you make it up, you could have a cocktail list. Is that right? Yep. 
That's so cool. Yeah, so we have all the options. We try to customize all our menus. Um, we don't like to make it where if you were to come to an event on Friday that it would be the same on Saturday. Okay. Uh, you know, the base of it is obviously the same, but the cocktails we're going to do differently. Uh, maybe the setup of the bar will be a little different. So it's a different feel for each event. And we really try to cater to what the host is looking for too, mm -hmm. whether it be budget friendly or theme friendly. Uh, one of the weddings we did this year, she had... Um, lavender as her flowers that oh, was okay. like in lavender and the colors and the scheme and everything like that so of course. So we made a lavender so gimlet so uh, lavender gimlet with you know some garnish uh, a lavender garnish um, and I mean the drink was great but it really went it tied in with everything Absolutely. that she was trying to do it's so much more special exactly than just having you know regular traditional drink you know if lavender means something to you personally right. and it's you know the most special day of your life mm -hmm. you know you want to have all of those fine details right. and it's great that you can really contribute to mm -hmm. that Definitely. That's wonderful. Now, do you have a personal drink of choice? Uh, I'm easy. When I go out, I'm more of a beer guy. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm, you know, it depends on what I'm in the mood for. So it can go anywhere from gin to, to rye Manhattan to a Miller High Life. So, I mean, it's, it really does vary on the, on, on the mood, day. On yeah. the day. When I get out of here, it will probably be... A, a vodka and soda yeah, or so something like that. Yeah, the drink this year is a vodka soda. Yeah, for me it will be, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. Vodka soda. <laughs> right? It's nice simple. Exactly. You can't mess it up. Yeah, I know. I try to keep it simple. So. Yeah, well, I'm sure you spend a lot of time mixing up your own cocktails. Yes. Now, you have a couple of different simple syrups. It looks, do you make these yourself? Yes. Or? So, part of what we do is we'll make the syrups uh, beforehand, mm -hmm. um, depending on if we're doing signature cocktails. Again, we can always just do beer and wine service. Um, whatever the, cl the client's really looking for. Okay. Um, but everything's done ahead of time. So there's a lot of love put into it before we actually yeah, get to an event. Um, and I did make two, d we're doing two cocktails today. Um, I can go over, you want me to go over one of them now? Or? Yeah, why don't you just right. start it up with the first one? Okay. Tell so, me a little bit about it. Like I said, we try to keep things local. Uh, this one right here is going to be an apple thyme shrub. Uh, shrubs are pretty popular over yeah. the past couple years when it comes to cocktails. Uh, the history of the shrub, it's a shrub and is a, it's an assidu assiduated beverage. So you put apple cider vinegar in this. Uh, they were using it back in medieval times okay. to preserve their fruits so that nothing would go or spoil quickly. Um, and then it's really taken a turn into like the cocktail world over the past like five, yeah. about five years or so. You see all sorts of different funky shrubs yeah. on menus, and I've never yeah. really known the background of it, but that's very interesting. And it's fun too because there's there's a lot of ways that people can actually make a shrub. Um, some people like to you know cook it in a pan. This one I just actually um, blended uh, instead of not cooking at all. Um, everyone's got their little way of doing yeah. it, so is you kind of. Is there much of a difference in taste? Not really. Um, I think blending it is just going to make it more, a little more of a froth when you actually strain it. Um, okay. But it'll break down more, obviously, when it's got heat um, added to it in a pan. So, like I said, I blended this one. This one is apple and thyme. So, I got the apples and thyme from all the produce, I actually, say we got from Four Town Farms um, in Seekonk. And this was just two chopped apples, uh, a couple things of thyme some sugar, some water, and a little bit of the apple cider. You blend it, and then you strain it um, through a strainer, and it comes out a liquid like this. Beautiful. Yeah, so it's some nice stuff. And then this is just some fresh squeezed le uh, lemon juice, and then this is uh, Loyal 9 Vodka oh, Loyal uh, Nine. from Sons of Liberty down in North Kingston area. We like to Great work with company. them a lot. Yeah, they're good guys to work for, awesome. or work with, I should say. So like, this is a vodka-based um, cocktail? So this is a vodka-based cocktail, yep. So awesome. I'll put that together for yeah. you. So yeah. definitely, it's pretty simple. We try to we try to do things, you know, a little more intense than the normal bar service. But at the same time, we have to keep in mind that there could be a possibility of 200 people that want drinks right. for cocktail hour or Absolutely. something like this. So you don't want to make things that are extremely difficult. Complicated beverages. Exactly. That, you know, lots of measuring and pouring and shaking. Right. That you know, if you have to do a high volume, high turnover, right. that it could be potentially an issue. So, you, you know, but you still are able to put your own touch on right. it. Right. I mean, okay. we totally can if somebody wants it like that. Yeah. But we try to work with um, the hosts of an event and kind of explain and guide them through the process of yeah. all that stuff. So basically what I did was an ounce and a half of the vodka, an ounce and a half of the shrub, and then it was just a half ounce of lemon juice. So then we're going to just shake it up. So give a little smile. <laughs> shake that nice. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to strain it. I'll strain it over here if I could. And I love these big cubes. So, so I got I'm the king cube. Got, so you've 
So this is called a king cube. King cube. Awesome. So that, and then we'll finish it, of course, with the garnish. Yes. So just a simple time garnish. So we try to do something um, fallish, and we try to do one for actually Thanksgiving. So for everybody watching that wants to impress their family at Thanksgiving. Yeah, you beat me to it. Do you have any recommendations for cocktails? This would be it right here. Actually, I would go with the I would go with the rye for Thanksgiving because okay, you know so a lot of heartier nice. stuff. That's what we're gonna yeah. see next. Yeah, yeah. So that one's a little lighter, a little more on the refreshing side. Mm, this is beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, the time definitely shines through here. Definitely does. And you know, it's it's New England, so one day it's ten degrees out and tomorrow it could be sixty. So you never know. that you could chose. yeah, that you could definitely kinda drink throughout the year. Um, and it keeps you keeps you having fun for sure. I love it. Uh, and then this one was um, what did we do here? We did a cranberry old fashioned. So cranberries again we got from the farm four towns. Um, this one was a little different in the cooking process. Uh, we heated things up in a saute pan. It was uh, some fresh cranberries. We did some nutmeg, uh, some cinnamon, sugar, water. Uh, and that was pretty much it on that. But cook it down. Once everything melts together, you let it steep for about an hour. So, or oh, an orange zest, I should say. Orange zest, um, okay. Let that orange really kind of get into the liquid of everything. Yeah. And then once that happens, you, uh, like I said, you let it steep for an hour, then you strain it again, and it, and it comes out to be a nice little flavor like that. So this one's a little different. It's more of a boozy cocktail. That was an ounce and a half mm -hmm. of vodka. This one's going to be uh, two ounces. So just be careful, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't go too crazy. Drink responsibly. So this is something you think that is relatively um, appropriate to be able to make yourself at home. Oh, yeah, you can definitely do This is just three steps. Um, <laughs> again, if anyone wants to check out a recipe, they can definitely go on our... Uh, Instagram or Facebook, we're happy to share some uh, recipes with everyone. Oh, that's awesome. And as you can see, this is a little more um, thicker in the Syrupy? process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, we're doing two ounces of that. This is only three quarters of an ounce, and then we're going to do two dashes of bitters. Two dashes of bitters. Yeah. Now, bitters is something that you will find on just about every bar right. anywhere. And if they don't have it, I would question that. Yeah, exactly. So that's a good what, point. What exactly is bitters? What does it do for a cocktail? It just has a lot of aromatic flavors to it. Mm -hmm. um, if you s go to the big cocktail bars, they'll actually have like different kinds a of bitters. ton of different bitters. I yeah. mean, celery, blood orange, there's tiki bitters, there's hellfire, there's everything under the sun. Wow. So it, it just really um, shines your cocktail flavors through. Wow. Um, but this is your basic aromatic bitters. Mm. Um, it just opens up the flavors a little more, especially of the rye. So on this, you'll taste taste the rye a little more than you'll actually taste the cranberry. But you should get like subtle notes of it yeah. as you're as you're sipping on it a little more. So same thing. We're gonna shake this up. <laughs> do this at a wedding, and you do it about 300 to 400 oh times. Gosh. You'll your, feel your shoulder is gonna yeah, be sore yeah. the next. Day. You feel it by the end of the yep, day, that's for definitely. sure. So this one again, we're just gonna do over a king cube. You could do this with, uh, you know, regular ice too. It's, mm -hmm. it's not. I like the king cubes because it, it looks cool. It, it looks cool, definitely. And um, yeah, the ice lasts a little longer, so okay. it's not getting um, di ice. yeah, it's not getting diluted as much. Okay. So this was actually the orange zest that we used in the cooking process. Awesome. So it still has like some sugar flavor to it. Um, so I've, the yeah, on the rim, and then if you really want to get fancy, you can throw a cinnamon stick in there as well. Awesome. And that's your cranberry old fashioned. Mm. You can smell it from here. Oh <laughs> God, it's so good. And I have to say, I'm not going to lie, I'm not the biggest bourbon drinker, mm -hmm. but this tastes wonderful. Awesome. This makes me feel like I should be like wrapped up. It feels like fall, right? By a fireplace, like post turkey on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Like just having a nice cocktail. Mm -hmm. This is just so it's it's wonderful. Good. It smells good. It tastes good. That's the point, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we try to do. Especially if we do some gin cocktails too. A lot of yeah. people are afraid afraid of gin yeah. or rye. A lot of people don't mm -hmm. uh, uh, like the the taste of rye, but when you're mixing it and you're kind of educating people on it, uh, <laughs> they learn to appreciate it more. Yeah. Uh, we actually did a cocktail. With JP Weiser, um, this is the brand that we're using for the rye. Uh, they're a Canadian-based company. Okay. Um, we wrote an article for them for Bar Business Magazine, which is like an industry-based uh, 
magazine, you know, specs and talks about um, trends and things like that. But we were able to work with them and, you know, they gave some samples and we mentioned them and made some cocktails for them. And it was cool. So it was all community Farm based. Yeah. And that's exactly what we try to do here. Educate people, um, form relationships with the farms, form relationships with the uh, brewers and distillers and just have a good time make some good cocktails yeah <laughs> I mean that makes everything that you're doing a little bit more special right definitely mm -hmm. it helps establish relationships with your clients right. even better mm -hmm. that's awesome yes very much so excellent now where can our viewers find you on Instagram so that way they can stay up to date yep. with where you're going to be doing events mm -hmm. and maybe some recipes that's right we'll definitely yeah, as recipes uh, we usually do some uh, Christmas time things if you're looking for some uh, some gifts to give out. Uh, we'll make cool. some syrups for everybody and we'll idea. give you the recipe and then all they really need to do is, you know, go out and get the alcohol or you can buy it for them if you want. And we'll have the recipes on there. So it's a nice little uh, Christmas present or even birthday Stuff present. Stuffers. Exactly. Yeah. So we can do, last year I know we did like eight ounce um, a little carafe, so all the way up to 32 ounces. So you can get a wow. lot of a lot of good uh, drinks out of those things. Yeah, <laughs> so like, that's... Like uh, exactly. Uh, you can find us on Instagram. It's uh, Seed and Sip, uh, S-E-E-D-A-N-D-S-I-P, instead of the ampersand and. Uh, and Facebook would be Seed, ampersand, and Sip. So it's a little different. So, But you can definitely find us there. Um, you can message us, either one, and we'll be happy to respond back to you. Awesome. So definitely keep that in mind this holiday season when you're looking for gifts or you're looking for just a cocktail. Maybe you're hosting <coughs> Thanksgiving or Christmas at your house mm -hmm. this year. You really want to impress your family members. Give them something really good to drink, something sweet and a little bit bitter, really good flavors mm -hmm. to welcome your family into your home. What a great idea for the holidays. <laughs> that is. Yes, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us today. You. We really appreciate, appreciate it. your input and for these lovely cocktails. I'm going to have a couple more sips of them before we head out today. And I really reach out to all of our viewers. Have a safe and happy Halloween tonight. Yes. Eat lots of candy. Mm -hmm. You might get a little toothache, but it's okay. It's <laughs> totally, totally worth it. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you all stay tuned because Kate is coming up at 4 o'clock. So make sure you check in for that as well. And have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much.